Testing, testing, testing. All right, we are good to go. Welcome everybody to Can Hammer TV. My name is Darren. I'm your host. Um, it's raining, which is a bit crazy. So we had uh, snow way earlier than usual, and then it's been seasonally warm, and now it's raining. Um, who knows what's going on with the climate? I don't know if it's warming or cooling or whatever, but something's fucked up about the climate and uh it's probably not good but anyway we'll carry on in our little microcosm of warhammer and uh, pretend nothing else is happening in other news we've got uh, impeachment hearings which are uh, riveting television and um yeah some uh, gun crime in ottawa which i was intimately involved in unfortunately and um Migraines going crazy these days. Uh, I actually had a big migraine most of today, and then for some reason it's just kind of disappeared, and now I'm okay. So I was all this close to pushing this episode back a day, but uh, we managed to come through. So welcome. Thank you for joining me. Um, we will be talking tonight, part seven of Custodes Tactica, which is all of the other Tactica leading up to this one, which is list building. And so hopefully, if you've been following along, um, you can use our previous episodes and knowledge gained from all our talking about individual units and unit types. And now we can put it together into some lists. And what we're going to do is actually build some lists live, hopefully, if my tech works. And uh, as you can see, kind of how I build a list anyway, I by no means am a uh, master list builder. I... Um, I'm, uh, you know, I'm, I'm just not generally super great with building lists, um, but uh, I guess I'm decent at building custodies lists, and that's what I like doing, and so hopefully it'll help you. Um, if you haven't been following or you're new to the custodies group, a lot of new player, uh, new people join every day, then please go back and check out the previous Custo uh, Tactica series from one to seven, and um, you can catch up. It'll be it's all available on our YouTube channel, Can Hammer, and uh, for a short period of time on Twitch, but it's all on uh, it's all on YouTube, and that includes a nice interview with Carlos uh, talking about soup as well. So uh, do go back and and watch the Tactica series if you're interested in how we got to this point, and then uh, carry on watching. Um, before, we'll talk about some news. Um, there hasn't been um, uh, too much after the leaks for the new stuff coming out in Psychic Awakening 2. It's getting a little bit confusing now because they're fast and furious. So we've got Psychic Awakening 2, which is like more Space Marine buffs and some stuff for Chaos Space Marines. Then we've got Psychic Awakening 3, which I think is the Blood Angels one. Oh, Black Templars, I think, was in the second book. The third book is going to be Blood Angels with the new Mephiston model, which looks pretty cool, if not a little bit too vampiric for my liking. But, you know, that's what the Blood Angels are. And um, today they just leaked, uh, somebody leaked some of the data, like data sheets and data cards from this Blood Angels book, apparently. And apparently it's pretty underwhelming. Now, there's, of course, rumors that this is fake. Whatever, we'll find out soon enough. But uh, it's pretty interesting seeing how salty get people get about unsubstantiated leaks speaking of unsubstantiated leaks so uh chris posted up not me chris posted up earlier some pretty unsubstantiated leaks about chapter approved which of course is coming out probably in a couple of weeks um probably by next weekend we should start hearing about maybe about chapter approved but according to this leak um Apparently, GW was worried that all of these books would not make Marines good and that uh, Marines have a lot of point drops in chapter approved. Now, I find that pretty hard to believe because those books were probably written about at the same time, if not the Marine book well before chapter approved. So I think it's unlikely that those two people would not have talked to each other and made sure that the points were not crazy now nah, so i think that's unlikely and it's probably fake however if it is true then literally marines are going to go off the chart they're already kind of off the charts 
I don't know if people watched Tuesday's game between Francois and Matthew, a rematch of Iron Hands versus Raven Guard. Literally, uh, Francois wiped Matthew off the table in like a couple of turns. It was pretty brutal. Um, and it wasn't even like ultra optimized Iron Hands list. So um, if everything goes down in price, like it's going to be over. Um, but anyway, uh, apparently Guardsmen uh, going up to five points to match Cultists. You know, like, I could see that happening. Guardsmen are better than cultists. Um, cultists were only really there because you could, like, resurrect the big unit of them. And they had, like, um, they had the various stratagems that made them better. Whereas Guardsmen were just cheap and lots of Lasgan fire. Um, but um, I could see that happening. It's not out of the realm of possibility. Although I think it's unlikely since Guardsmen aren't exactly, like, rocking the world right now. Um, apparently tank commanders going up 20 points. I could see that happening. Tank commanders are very good, although these days die instantly to marines. Um, and, uh, of course, most of the ch changes in chapter approved were made before the marines book came out. So don't expect chapter approved to correct marines. Um, shield drones apparently can't use their feel no pain on mortal wounds. I don't know how true that would be. That would kind of make shield drones pretty bad. Um, so, I don't know. I mean, some of this kind of seems a little bit wish listy. Eldar, minus one to hit strat, capped at minus two. Yeah, like, I don't know. Orcs are losing all units without models to legends. Well, we already knew this, and I'm sure it's probably not just orcs. Especially with the new marine book out, probably old marine characters like dudes on bikes and stuff are going to get legended as well. But I don't think it's going to happen in chapter proof. We'll see. Who knows? Um, cult marines. I'm not sure what cult marines means. If we mean like space, like chaos space marines, go to two wounds but get a points bump. Don't know. No points drop for regular chaos space marines or blitz. Add mechanicals changes to require every unit in the army to be add mech. Um, I don't know. I don't see why they would change that. Like, it's not hurting anybody. I don't sure why that would be judged. Um, personally, I think there's going to be a three flyer limit in chapter approved. Um, that's why it wasn't an FAQ. I think that's my theory. Um, but we'll see. We'll see. So, um, that's about it news-wise. Uh, in terms of um, next week's schedule, so next week we're doing our final week of uh, ITC. Uh, we're going to have a Dayhammer uh, game between myself and Nick, as requested by the group. Uh, my list versus uh, Chaos, Psyker, sort of Smite Spam sort of thing. And then we're going to have a... Uh, I'm trying to get uh, Ian from the group to come and bring his triple knights i guess people wanted to see triple knights so we'll see how that goes that will probably be the end of itc for a little bit and we're going to switch over to doing etc uh for a couple months in preparation for uh can hammer team so probably not much is going to happen the last two weeks like uh, over the christmas break in terms of stream because i'm going away so it's not really a full two months it would be like kind of six weeks of streaming etc games so there'll be a bit of a change and then we'll get right back on it um i'm going to try and continue to do custodies tactica um ongoing um even if we switch tack to to doing other things so uh so don't worry about that we'll keep that going um at the end of today's show if you're still with us i have two books to give away i've got the salamanders and the imperial fist supplements to give away at the end of the show so stay tuned to the end and we will be giving these away these are brand new courtesy of hoyt at thunder games and gifts as usual i have a copy literally of every single book that comes out and I eventually give them away so there we go two supplements to give away um at the end of this show okay so um let's go on to part seven custodies tactica list building so the first thing i'm going to say is that if you have questions or ideas um please put them in the chat as we go and i'll try and answer them as we go um we're trying to make this as interactive as possible um the other thing to say is i'm not a master list builder i'm not like sean naden or mitch or these guys who are really good at making lists 
Um, I just build from experience and um, and so I consider myself to have a decent amount of experience in custodies. Um, so that's another thing. Third thing to say is that we are building for peer lists. You know, most of Tactica has been about peer custodies. And so this episode is about building peer custodies lists. I think the interview with Carlos last time gave a beautiful, uh, a beautiful uh, description of the kind of things you can do with soup with custodies. So uh, uh, souping in allies with custodies. So I'm not going to cover that. That covered a lot of bases and there's a, a, a pretty good chat going on on the custodies channel discord about uh, soup options. Uh, if you're watching and you're a custodies player and you want to join our custodies community, um, I'll, I'll post a link uh, later, but um, um, it's a thriving community right now of lots of people talking about all sorts of things with custodies. And um, so please consider joining, try and post the link up. Um, so the list building, how we're going to do it is I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the general principles of building a list with custodies. Some of the um, uh, types of lists that generally are out there or maybe not out there very much, but are, are kind of archetypes. And then we're going to talk about a couple of lists and try and build some lists with you live here. Um, if the technology works, um, we're going to be talking a lot about the age old question, battalion versus non battalion. That's obviously one of the archetype questions. And, um, and obviously this builds on the knowledge of the individual unit analysis that we have been doing over the last six tactics. So I'll try not to delve too much back into individual unit analysis. Inevitably, we're going to end up talking a little bit about that as we build our list because we have to just, you know, just dis uh, describe why we made certain choices. But um, we try not to spend too much time going back over stuff that we already covered. OK, so the first thing to say when people say, what is the best custodies list? I'm not sure that there is a best custodies list. I think it is very dependent on the type of missions you're playing, first and foremost. And then in each mission format, there may well be a list that is the most optimal for that mission format. But then that also depends on the type of armies that you're gonna play against. Uh, what we call your local meta okay there's really not a global meta okay there's not one single meta that everybody plays i think if you're planning on going an event you should get an idea of what you're likely to face there because that could be very different depending on what event you're going to um so you know and there's these general phrases of west coast meta and east coast meta and you know you euro meta six months ahead or whatever i don't know if that's really that true but it's just a case of you need to plan your list to play the missions you're going to play and to play against the people that you're going to play against. What's up, Shadizo, Rob, Monsal, Nebula, thank you for joining. Um, so that's the first thing to say about any list building, let alone custodies, any list building is you should build to the mission and build to the meta. OK, so keeping those things in mind, we're going to try and talk a little bit about those sort of things. Um, so the, uh, most of the lists that we've been talking about in the custodies chat and throughout Tactica have been primarily focused around ITC format, um, because that is probably the most common format that I play and certainly, uh, a lot of people play. Um, the other common format of course is ETC format, which is kind of European, uh, and then the other common way that people play is just out of chapter approved missions or maelstrom missions or eternal war missions. Uh, and then there's several distinct tournament uh, mission types that if you're going to those tournaments, you should definitely know about. So Nova mission, then you have um, uh, Adepticon has special missions, Wars of Atlanta has special missions, you know, the boys have special missions. So the individual tournament that you're going to may have their own missions. Not everybody does the same. In fact, a lot of the big tournaments do their own thing. So you should be aware that you may need to change what you bring or what you do or what your list looks like depending on the meta. We're probably going to stick a l mostly to ITC, um, but if 
if appropriate, I might stick some comments in there about other mission formats um, if we come across that. Um, the ITC mission format is fairly straightforward. You need to hold something every turn, ideally kill something every turn, and then complete your secondaries. Um, and more importantly for custodies is what we're going to come to, which is what some of the strengths of the army are and what some of the weaknesses are. So the general principle with custodies list building is you have to remember we are an elite army. We are probably the most elite army in the game other than running Imperial Knights. Um, uh, definitely other than Knights, we are the army that fields the least number of models. Um, and so that makes us an elite army. We're more elite than Grey Knights. We're more elite than those other seemingly elite armies. We're definitely more elite. My average list is 15 or 16 models. That's it. Not 15 units, 15 models, five to six units. So it's very elite and it's appropriately tough. Up until Space Marines came out, it's appropriately tough to get through our army. I've not been tabled very often, even by Marines but it's not often that you get tabled if you play smartly. So you have to remember that you're, you have 15, 16, 17 models in your army. You cannot afford, uh, two things you can't afford. One is when you're playing, you cannot afford dying. Okay, every wound hurts. A mortal wound here hurts. Every wound hurts. Plinking wounds on a 200 model army, not a big deal. Plinking wounds when you only have 15 models and maybe like 45 wounds, 50 wounds in total, that hurts. So you have to really play to that. Um, and also losing models. Every model is like 50 points or more. It really hurts and decreases your effectiveness in return a lot more than killing a model or even a squad on an opponent's army. So um, that's the first thing. We are very elite. So every model you lose hurts. And every model you have needs to do something. You can't have any time wasters in your list. That's a big one of my biggest problems with battalions. You have to, every model, every unit has to have a role or multiple roles and has to be able to do it every turn, ideally. So, um, so that there's no time wasting efficiency as much as possible. Because generally, we're not very points efficient because we're low number of models, large number of points. So there's that. We are fairly hard to kill, even in today's crazy shooting meta. If you're rolling four ups hot, you're going to not die. So we are fairly hard to kill. Almost the whole army has four up involm, two up save. So at least T5. So we're fairly hard to kill, which is good. Um, not quite as hard as everybody would hope these days, but fairly hard to kill. Um, so by virtue of being very elite, um, you cannot play MSU style, especially these days. You cannot play Min Guardian units generally. I think that's rough. Every time you lose, like you, you're trying to play a denial style. So as Carlos said, you know, the true way to be ultra competitive with custodies is to deny. Deny your opponent scoring points. If they can't score points, they can't win. Um, they're gonna hold something. They might hold more on you, but if they don't kill something four out of six turns of the game, that's four points up you are. Um, and maybe more if you get kill more, if you kill, which you usually do. So that is the road to victory a lot of times. Assuming both players are going to score 12, 11 to 12 points on their secondaries, you need to kill and kill more in order to win the game. And generally is low scoring mid mid 20s yeah it's rare that you're gonna get up to like the high 30s or like 40 you never get like 42 um so you know it, that's the name of the game is low to mid scoring denial style uh, make it hard for your opponent to kill you and um so that you don't give up kills and so that's the key really so you have to design your army to deny like that so msu doesn't really work because small units can be killed pretty easily um so that's one of the principles is you're trying to build generally a denial style of list. That old school 18 bike hyper aggressive push forward style of custodies list does not work. It only marginally worked last time uh, before 
And but certainly in today's meta with today's armies out there, it does not work. It's really hard to charge people these days. Um, boulders don't go as far as they used to. It's just not a um, a, a successful way of building a, a list anymore. Hyper aggressive. Um, so with that in mind, you need to design for resilience and for denial. So it's the difference between giving up three secondary points and four secondary. So for example, running a um, running four characters instead of three characters, you know, so you just, you don't want to give your opponent an opportunity to max out anything if you can help it. Now, we'll, we usually give up gangbuster, unfortunate, but that's just the nature of the models that we have to play with. We're always going to give up gangbuster, but like you shouldn't, you should try not to give up four points of anything else make the opponent pick things that he has to achieve or uh, uh, not by killing you um and of course if they do pick those things then that's just in your favor because probably they won't even get the three maybe they'll get two or none of those so so that's the name of the game is denial and you uh after you finished your list you look over and you say okay what points am i giving up in this list uh, that's a very important consideration in itc when you're playing a denial strategy okay um, so I think that kind of is the general points we want to make about custodies. You generally, you're trying to design a denial list that can kill something every turn and hold at least one or two objectives and not die. And if you succeed in that, you will find that by the end of the game, you have way more hitting power than your opponent because you've been slowly whittling away their killing power. They have not really killed much of yours. And then by the turn five, turn six, you still have a lot left and they don't have much left. And when they don't have much left, then it gets harder and harder for them to kill you. Um, so that's kind of the dynamic that you're going. So you're kind of play conservative to start with. And they got a lot, sorry, my hands are on the screen. They got a lot of stuff. And then the power shift should slowly do this. And like turn three, four, there should be that you should feel that turning point in your mind as you're playing. Okay, I've survived to this point. I've gotten rid of their heavy hitters. Now is my time to be more aggressive as their power comes down and they start losing that critical mass of models. So you're generally aiming in a game to kind of cross paths around turn three, turn four. Um, and so in a successful game, that's that's what happens. And And even if you lose... A lot of models in that first couple of turns if you can just survive to turn three four and start making inroads you can turn the game around because of your resilience so so that's kind of what you're looking at in the general traje trajectory of a game you're not going to be the army that wins in turn one and two that's not how you are in fact i often will spend turn one and two doing not very much so uh, it's just important to keep that in mind when you're building your list okay so I hope that's pretty clear. Um, what we're going to talk about now is list archetypes. Okay, so generally out there in the custodies meta, there's a few types of list list types or list archetypes. Number one is the battalion list. So, um, and the battalion list can be exclusively foot or can include other non-foot things, but it's basically a list built around a battalion. So unfortunately in Custodes, um, let's just build, let's see if this works, let's see if this works. All right, all right, here we go, here we go, ready to go. Oh. Okay. So hopefully you see up here now on your screen, a uh, pop-up that is a, just the capture of uh, battle scribe for windows okay so what we're going to do is put together a basic battalion and just to show you how much tax you're paying for a battalion okay so a basic battalion let's say you take valoris okay you take a shield captain just a foot captain okay the cheapest type of captain you can have that guy's not going to be doing much in your game and then three guard squads uh, so it's cheaper actually now to take three min Sagittarium units. Okay, so let's do that. Okay, so already you've spent 747 points for a battalion. Base, okay? Three man Sagittarium squads, no Misericordia, 
your basic chapter master, so a Valoris, and a base base shield captain with a spear. No Terminator armor, no no nothing. Okay, so already out the gate, you spent almost uh, uh, over a third of your army just on a battalion, and so these this battalion based archetype is based on that. You are accepting that cost to get some min easy to kill units for the sake of 5 CP, basically. So let's talk about that for a second. What do we need 5 CP for? I play almost all my games with three to four CP. Often I will have a CP or two left at the end of the game. If you use Valoris's um, Moment Shackle, you end up with, um, let me get the chat back up here just in case. You end up with, um, you know, anywhere from five to seven CP actually in effect. Um, so really, you don't need that five CP. What is very important for custodians to use CP on? Homer or stooping dive, which are three CPs, generally Homer, and then the odd interrupt or avenge the fallen or tangle foot. So four CP, four to seven CP is gonna do you fine. You don't need a battalion, okay? Now, if you have a battalion, then you got all the CP and you can throw it around on random rerolls and stuff. But really, it's not so vital that it's worth spending 747 points on. And what do these guys get you? So they get you 150 point backfield sitters, okay? So you need somebody to sit on the backfield, so put your 150 points there. They're just going to sit there. That doesn't seem worth it to me. If you really want something to just sit on the back and do nothing, then just pay 140 points for an Atlas Dreadnought. Because it's cheaper, it probably survive a little bit better, and it can just sit at the back for less wasted points. You know, so so you got to think about it in that way. What's the opportunity cost of spending 747 points on this basic battalion? And it's more if you're buying Guardians, by the way. So, um, and it's more if you're going to add Misericordia to these Sagittarium. So that is, unfortunately, the true choices that we have. Um, and uh, so you have to really consider why you want the battalion, okay? So in any case, so a battalion-based um, battalion list is basically based on this minimum expenditure of a battalion, and then you add on that. Uh, George Gorjewski, welcome. He says he's been spending 117 points on three shield captains, uh, and they're the backfield sitters. Sure, that's still a lot of points to sit on the backfield. You know, other armies are spending 40 points to sit in the backfield, 35 points, freaking Thunderfire cannons. Um, so, you know, it's still a lot of points just sitting in the back and doing nothing. And a lot of times you don't need to actually sit on the backfield objectives. <clears throat> If you're playing smart. So um, I'm just pointing out some of the downsides of why I don't like battalions. But if you're running a battalion list, you, you basically, so you start with the battalion and then you need your hammer units. So what are the hammer units? You know, Alaris, Aquilon, um, Wardens, um, <clears throat> Bikes, those kind of things. You know, so those are your hammer units. Um, the other thing that you is probably an auto take in custodies list still as of right now is of course your vexilla so if you add your vexilla in now you change uh i don't actually know how to change this sorry i've never used a battle scribe on a desktop before so it's actually another kind of 10 points so the vexilla usually comes in about 120 points and he's giving you your minus one to hit, which is still quite useful against most armies, just not Marines. Um, and um, he also gives you your Homer. So he's kind of still mandatory right now. So you got to factor that into your base cost. Probably a combination of two HQs in terms of Captains or Valoris and the Vexilla. Um, and then that is what you need in order to run a basic custodies list. So they're your auto takes. So um, that's your basis, and then what you're looking at is running other bike units. So let's say we want a unit of bikes because you know bikes are good. Let's put in, uh, you know, yeah. This just shows I don't know how to use Battlescribe on the computer.
Anyway, okay, so a unit of uh, five bikes is 450 points. Um, so, and I think five is probably the minimum unit of bikes for effectiveness. So, um, as we've said before, so there's another 450 points. Okay. So we're going to be up to like, you know, going to be up to like 1300 points almost. And then you need another hammer unit because you can't just run a battalion and a unit of bikes. So you could have another unit of bikes. You could have a unit of Aqualon Terminators, which is what I would suggest Every custodian's list should have a unit of Aqualon Terminators. So that's another, you know, 400 points, 400 something points. So then you're basically done. You got little bits of points to spend to maybe add a Sagittarium, add some Misericordia, you know, you, that you're basically done. You have a battalion, two hammer units, and that's it. That's your basic battalion list. So, um, so, so that's it. So if you start losing uh, your your uh, battalion units or if you they whittle your uh, Aqualons or your bikes down to two, three models, you've lost all your hitting power. So by spending so many points on the basic battalion, you're really limiting what else you can do with your list other than what your two hammer units do. And then you've got a lot of pretty stagnant foot based guys, which can get far. Don't don't kid me. Don't get me wrong but not as far and not as toolsy. So that's your basic kind of battalion based list. Um, and then the difference between foot custodies, you know, and non foot custodies is fairly arbitrary. You know, do you consider the bikers foot custodies or not foot custodies? I think, you know, just a matter of semantics. I think it's fairly hard to play a pure foot list. If you want to do a pure foot list, probably what you do then, um, Is so you get rid of the bikes and you put in, um, you know, something else like wardens or like a unit of Alaris Terminators. Okay. And then again, because you've got spent enough on your battalion, you've just got two hammer units and uh, your battalion, and then everybody's on foot, although they can deep strike. So that's probably what you're looking at when you're looking at a foot list is your basic battalion and, um, your hammers so let's just go uh let's build the list that i built okay so let's build my current foot list okay which i feel like may be one of the more optimized ways of playing foot custodies with some bikes, you just have to. You just have to have bikes. I'm sorry, sorry guys, sorry purists. Um, so, and what I'm trying to do here is the principles that I've set forward right at the beginning. You want everything in your army to do something. Nothing is wasted, and you're not spending points on things that you don't need, like extra CP. So here we go. So I still consider Valoris a must take. So Valoris, and then I need another HQ which I'd love to always take, if I have the points, captain on bike, because so flexible, I uh, give him the three up in bone, he can do so many things, and he's fast. He's also one of your few anti-flyer weapons in this kind of list, and flyers are still a thing. Iron Hands flyers now, Eldar flyers, Dark Eldar run lots of flyers, um, there's lots of flyers around, so you still need flyers, you know, triple croissants and the necrons, you need flyers. Okay, then I'm running um, a Sagittarium unit, which actually I'm not super enamored with, but it's quite a decent amount of firepower and a backfield unit for only 270 points. So I'm going to run those guys. Uh, George, you were saying click on Vexilla unit and the sidebar will give you the weapon options. Oh, I see what you mean. I cut off the sidebar here. Okay, so we're running a Sagittarium unit. Okay, and I'm running one, two, six of them, I believe. Five. Okay, so five is a nice number, decent enough, hard to kill. Three is too easy to kill. Six, uh, five, I think, is a max, or six. Um, so five of them, and then uh, I've given Misericordia to all of them. Okay, so, um, and that adds four points. Clearly don't know what I'm doing here. Here we go. Okay. 
So we can add a Misericordia because you don't want these guys to get wrapped. But if you give them a Misericordia now, they become pretty hard to wrap. Okay, and they're your backfield. They have 36-inch range. They can move, advance, and still shoot. And they can actually shoot both profiles at once. So there we go. So there's your Sagittarium Troopers. Okay, there we go. So now we're up to... Um, Six hundred and fifteen points. Okay, so now, but that unit, all these units are doing something. So the is obviously doing something. Shield by jet by captain is always doing something. These five uh, guys are going to hold our backfield. Uh, they couldn't be used for screen. They're going to shoot stuff, and they're going to be generally useful. Okay, now we're going to add Aqualon Terminators. Okay, Aqualon Terminators are the bomb. Minimum unit is four. Five is a nice number, okay, and um, uh, and that's fine. Six is probably a little bit excessive because um, it's a lot of points. You don't really need six to kill most things. It takes up a lot of space. It becomes harder to homer them in because there's freaking 50 millimeter bases. So I think five is a good number, four to five. Um, certainly, if you're trying to find points for something you really want, you could consider dropping an Aqualon Terminator, but five is a nice number. And they're all base with bolters and power, glove, uh, and power fists. So it's 415 points there. Now we're up to 1030 points thank you george for that tip obviously you've used this before okay so now we're about halfway done now we've got one hammer unit a good backfield unit and both our hqs okay so obviously we need the vexilla there's no reason to run a vexilla with terminator armor no reason because he never needs to deep strike and it's not worth the points for the extra wound um and uh the vexilla obviously is going to have the magnifica because minus one hit is still good. And uh, just because of points wise, what we're doing with this guy is the Vexilla very rarely needs to kill anything. But now it does come under a lot of fire due to eliminators and snipers. So what we're going to do is give him a storm shield. And he's going to take a Misericordia because we have four points. And so now you have a Vexilla who has a three up invuln and it's fairly hard to kill. He's natively minus one to hit. So that's nice. It's 124 points. So there's our Vexilla. Okay. And then the next thing we're going to take is our uh, another hammer unit, uh, which is the bikes. And as I said, min bike unit is five. And you don't want any more. If you take more, um, they become more of a magnet. They give up full gangbusters. They uh, can be uh, can lose to morale. Oh god, you don't want to lose anybody to morale. Losing a ninety point model to morale test, no thank you. So uh, we got five guys here, just base with hurricane bolters. So that's four hundred fifty points. So now we're up to sixteen hundred points. We've got two hammer units. Our, and our three auto takes and a big unit of Sagittarium for backfield and for shooting. And then we have space now for another hammer unit. So here's where you can get a little, get a little bit creative. So if you're running this kind of foot custodies list, you have options. What are your options? Okay, let's look through them. So you could add a large guardian squad. Okay, if you run a large spear unit of you know, seven to eight guys, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven guardians. You might be able to squeeze another one in, 20 points over, but we can compensate. So seven to eight guys. Now uh, with plus one to wound stratagem, um, you're going to be cool. Now the problem with this unit is you need to spend one of your precious four CP on to deep strike it. Um, then you're gonna need to spend another CP for plus one to wound. Um, and it's hard to get seven to eight of these guys into all fight one thing if you really need so actually i don't think that's actually that good so we're going to remove it next choice alaris so in this points you can have five alaris terminators now alaris uh, were pretty ignored once aqualon came on the scene um, but I think since we already have the Aqualon, Alaris may give us little things that are nice. They're natively able to deep strike. Um, they have strength eight axes. They have the no overwatch stratagem, which these days is pretty clutch sometimes. 
they can snipe characters, but again, that's 2 CP. You're probably not doing that very often. Um, and with the ability to pile in towards characters, you can do a lot of pile in and consolidation shenanigans in combat phase with them. Um, so, so the, the, the unit of Alaris here can be pretty nifty given that you already have bikes and Aqualon. And that's what not taking the battalion allows you to do. It allows you to have points to do other stuff, like have a hard-hitting Alaris unit that can also deny Overwatch and things like that. So um, that is a good option, okay? Uh, so we're going to leave that in there for now. That is the option that I went with in my list. What are the other options? Okay, so you could add Dreadnoughts. Dreadnoughts are in a bad place right now. Not particularly good. Um, you could add a unit of Wardens. So a unit of Wardens. For the same points, the Alaris are 415. So how many Wardens can we get? We can get just about six to seven wardens let's just say six to be conservative so a unit of six wardens is basically exactly the same punching wise as a unit of six alaris they have feel no pain which might save you three or four wounds over the course of a game um but they don't deep strike you need to spend cp to deep strike them um and uh, they don't have uh, movement shenanigans with the character thing they don't have the overwatch stratagem so they don't have a lot of things so if you're comparing same number of alaris to same number of wardens um then you're really um it's really not a great comparison and i would actually take the alaris so i think the wardens now start to lose out with some of the uh, uh uh since we already have two hammer units okay and then venetari i'm not gonna wax too long about venetari venetari are are too expensive for three up safe troops we've already talked about denial you don't want to give up kills and but you so you cannot afford to have dudes on three up save i'm sorry you just can't um if otherwise they would be so good 12 in, moving jetpack infantry has so many advantages to like bikes they can go through walls and stuff but the three up save really does kill them it, it really does um so 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 venetari just aren't a consideration um and we're not talking tanks because it's a foot list so um so that's basically it so this is the list um, yeah, and the Venetari, as George says, just don't kill anything. Like, they really don't. It's just, it's just very weak. Okay, so that's my list. 1999 points, basically. That's my current foot list. And the way, the thing I like about this list is it's quite a lot of mobility. You have a five-man bike unit. You have two units that can deep strike. Uh, you can homer uh, at least one of them. If you're lucky, you could homer both. Um, and uh, there's a lot of hitting power here, both shooting and in combat. There's some pile-in shenanigans. There's plenty of opportunities to wrap things, but using a combination of one or more units. You have two very hard-to-kill, excellent characters with buffs, and you have the Vexilla. So this is actually what I think is the ideal foot list working with what we got right now. Um, you need terrain. You need to play it well. Um, but this is what I would run for foot right now okay so i think we can move on from that let's just reset this okay so now we've kind of uh moved away from battalions and foot now what we're trying to do is, so what some people have been running are uh, vehicle heavy lists. So I think these are a perfectly viable way of playing custodies is with heavy uh, amount of vehicles. Because our vehicles are not particularly hardy, but they do have five up involves, which is a lot more than most vehicles have. So if you're a bit lucky on your five ups, your vehicles can actually last a long time. But other than that, um, Your shield captain separate detachment. Uh, so George just commenting that um, he prefers three shield captains instead of the five bike unit. Um, that's an interesting alternative. 
Uh, I just find like the five bike unit kills more than the three captains. I find it's so easy for a shield captain on a bike to fluff. Um, and also, yeah, they have three plus plus save, but only if you give them three plus plus save. They can't all have three plus plus save. Um, and yes, they can't be targeted, but if you want them to do something, they will never really be able to be targeted. So, um, so that's the only thing. So if that's one of your, your, you're giving up a hammer unit for three guys to fly around, they need to, you need to be pretty smart with your screening to make sure they don't get picked off. Um, and so, but that's an interesting suggestion. Okay, so uh, so our vehicles are are pretty killy even after the nerf. They are uh, decently hard to kill, especially with the minus one hit banner if you can keep them in range. And so running vehicle heavy uh, is is a viable way. I don't think you're gonna win a GT like that, but you could probably go you know three and two, four and one if you're lucky with a vehicle heavy army. Previously, it was like the triple Orion was like the boogeyman. Personally, I think that's. A more three and two or maybe worse army especially these days so these days now there's so much more threat to our vehicles everybody's gearing to kill vehicles uh executioners kill vehicles uh iron fit uh, imperial fist kill vehicles iron hands kill vehicles the freaking intercessors have minus three ap two damage 36 inch range weapons okay so you're uh, i think the vehicle problem is that they will just die um because actually the foot troops are harder to kill um and can have cover and you can hide them whereas the vehicles are harder to hide so i think it's not the most effective way of playing custodies but you can do that i think if you're going to play vehicle heavy then i think you know you start with the usual you can pick valoris Um, or just a normal shield captain or a, a, a jet bike captain. You need something that's going to keep up to your vehicles to give them the buffs. So, you know, you can choose. I'll just pick my usual three. You need the Vexilla. The Vexilla may be less mandatory in this kind of list because you don't need the Homer, but I still think that the minus one to hit is quite important, especially in that first turn. So let's give him the, uh, the right banner. Um, and then you start adding vehicles. So I think if you're running vehicle heavy, you need to have your triple uh, Caladius. And then probably what you want is one of these guys, at least one to have the blaze, let's say two, because the blaze is what we need to kill vehicles. Unfortunately, the Caladius is not that good at it anymore. And then most people would run, you know, a couple of palace tanks, two or three if you're going vehicle heavy let's run three palace tanks are good 100 points is very cheap their cannon is very nifty can plink off uh, more wounds than you would think very fast great for objective grabbing screening very nice vehicles so um you run three of those and then you have enough space uh let's be fun let's add the aries gunship okay and the Ares gunship is not as hard to kill as you would think these days, but it's still fairly hard because T8, a lot of wounds, minus one to hit, five up in bone. It'll be minus two to hit, actually. Um, so, you know, it's it's uh, it's not so bad. It, it will definitely help you kill vehicles. And there's not a lot of horde out there these days. So, you know, this is a fairly you know decent list. And you still have 120 points to go around. So, you know, you could add, uh, you know, add another captain or something like that. Um, so that's nice where you could use an Orion instead of an Ares. Um, I don't think the, the carrier, the, the transport really has a place here. Um, you still have 120 points. Um, you could probably, you know, upgrade another uh, Blaze. Or you might, if you could cut some points somewhere, you could even add in um, a Dreadnought for backfield or something. I don't know. Add a unit of Sagittarium. I mean, there's options adding stuff in Inquisitor these days. <laughs> um, so here it is. The problem with this list is you're going to give up Big Game Hunter, obviously. Um, you probably fairly easily give up um, uh, Butchers. Um, but, you know, like you, this is a lot of shooting. And you're going to overwhelm, you know, three to four out of five of your opponents on any given tournament. Um, so, you know, that's definitely a way that you can play Custodes is heavy vehicle and definitely looks cool on the tabletop and it's probably pretty fun to play. 
Um, I haven't tried that yet. I haven't actually assembled, um, finished my Orion, and I don't have an Aries, but I might try it one of these days just for fun. I've got all the other stuff. Um, well, I only have um, I only have two palace tanks. I didn't buy three for some reason. Um, and as I've said many times, I'm done painting gold. So anyway, this is a way of playing stories is vehicle spam. Okay, so um, the final archetype is what I like to call my normal list. But what this is basically is a non-battalion, take all the best units, make a toolsy list, which maximizes what everything can do. So this is the principle behind my list design is, is exactly what I said at the beginning. So I want every unit to do one or two things and to do it all the time. And I don't want any wasted points. Everything is doing something. If something's sitting around not doing something, I feel really bad like it's a waste of points. Um, everything is fairly hard to kill. Denial, denial, denial. And it, I think it plays to ITC missions very well. So I will go through with you what my list is right now, which has changed from before, obviously. I'm now on list version 2B. And and um uh, and we're gonna make it so here we go okay so as previously i have valoris valoris is just so good okay now in the second hq slot i actually have a terminator armor captain so this was really the main crux when i changed from version uh, one to version two is i had the option because uh, basically making space for blaze cannons on my Cladis tanks so i had the option of either dropping an aqualon terminator to four which i didn't like dropping valoris which i didn't like either he gives you extra cp basically he's a beat stick he gives you the reroll one to wound aura and if he gets to the front line he, he, he kicks some butt. So I really didn't want to drop uh, Valoris. And also a little bit of the fluff bunny on me. I need the chapter master there. So um, so that's it. And the third option was to drop the biker captain to a normal captain. And so that's what I ended up doing. I, I hate losing the shield captain because so many games he's just like that last dude or that thorn in the person's side. But it was the thing I decided to drop into a normal captain in Terminator armor. The So... I had the points anyway, so the Terminator armor, what that gives me the ability to do with this captain is to deep strike him and drop him in the front line uh, to give buffs to the front line without having to walk him up the field or anything. It all Or it allows him to uh, sit at the back, be a little bit harder to kill, and he can be the buff bot. So really, um, and uh, I've given him an axe because I had two extra points. So um, the function of the captain is either to buff the tanks with the reroll one hits to aura if I don't need the wound aura. So if I'm shooting blaze cannons, mostly at vehicles, they reroll wounds already. So I don't need Valora sitting at the back. I can have the captain just giving the reroll aura there at the back and then uh, Valoris can be deep struck for a CP and he can drop in the front line. And then the secret tech here is I gave him the Praetorian plate. So by giving this captain the Praetorian plate, now he has the option of redeploying if uh, either my Vexilla or Valoris, depending on the matchup, gets into gets charged into combat, boom, that captain can shoot forward if I need him to. So that just gives him extra movement options, and I really had nothing else to use my free relic on, as you'll see. So that's the Praetorian plate. I've yet to, yet to get it to go off, but that is just the uh, option I have there. So those are my two HQs in this list. Then, as I said, I have my Vexilla. So the Vexilla, of course, running the Magnifica. And in my list, he is, again, just a hard-to-kill Vexilla. So Storm Shield, Misericordia, and he's my Warlord. Um, I um, always make my Vexilla the Warlord because he hardly ever gets killed. Um, and uh, he's usually near the front line, dropping things in, and he will have the Champion of the Imperium Warlord trait, which is the one that gives everything, uh, well, most things within 12 inches, the heroic intervene. And what that is usually is not that I can actually use them to heroic intervene from nowhere. 
but although that's nice too but also that if i'm in combat already but not based this literally gives me three inches of extra movement like a second pile in basically at the big at the end of my opponent's charge phase which can be really catch people off guard because they don't know that so that is a, the best part of that warlord trait is the inter combat movement that that gives you um okay so there's my vexilla straightforward so now i add killing power so now i've got my favorite unit in custodies the aqualon terminators five of these bros uh, and I think they're just base. Yes, five of these bros base. Boom. These guys don't need to go over them. They kill everything. Um, next, I have my obligatory five bike unit. And the reason I still keep five bikes is because they're good. They're actually the hardest unit to kill in my army because they are T6 instead of T5, which makes a big difference. Um, and then also they have my horde clearing. So while there's not too much horde in the, um, they're not too much horde in the meta right now. Uh, when you do come across that orc player or the guard player or ad mech or where they're running these small little units, so venoms, uh, cavalite warriors guardian units a unit of five bikes in the right position can take out two three four of those units in one turn just with hurricane bolters so uh, they're still really good for that they're obviously fast they can get on objectives they're all obsec and they hit pretty hard if you can get the charge so uh and then of course they can fall back and shoot so i still think a five man bike unit has a lot going for it uh so they're in there i'm up to 1300 points now so I still got 700 points. So in this slot now, I've put my triple grav tank. So the Caladius with the twin accelerator is still really good. It is really good now at killing. What do we need to kill? Marines. Um, you know, at straight two damage is actually really nice for killing centurions. Um, that kind of T4, T5 heavy armored infantry type model uh it's great at digging out eliminators and infiltrators because that minus three is nice and the two straight two damage just insta kills uh primaris so i think you have to run at least one normal Cladius tank these days uh, and it has a lot of shots and with a buffer nearby like uh, valoris it's actually quite efficient at doing that and it's just as obnoxious as it used to be 14 inch moving can as uh, we showed on the Cladius uh uh, tactica last time you know charge things eat overwatch you know it, it can be very annoying to deal with and still fairly durable so i think for 220 points it is still a excellent unit and then for today's vehicle heavy meta i have now uh got two blaze caladius and the two shots really pains me because even if you hit and wound which most of the time you do a uh, a cheeky involved can just have the amount of damage it does so you know um uh unfortunately it's a necessary evil we we have to have that high strength shooting multi-damage shooting like we just have to otherwise you have no way of interacting with that and even if there are not um even if they are not shooting at vehicles they will take out centurions very easily um they will take out an eliminator unit they will because uh, minus four is really digging them out uh you know um so it's really actually good for killing heavy infantry as well because you're wounding all those things on twos so it's really good at that too so actually it's quite flexible it's not just anti-vehicle um so i think two blades is where it's at and so adding the second blaze is what made me change my hq loadout to make space and uh yeah so that's my list uh so on the chat we've got a question about agamatis bikes i just think the agamatis bikes are just too interest uh too expensive um uh the twin laz is interesting except that it's uh minus one to hit and it's just too expensive um and you know like it just hurts me that a freaking like 
you know, there's there's so much more better shooting than that. So uh, I, I just don't I just don't like it. Um, I think Carlos is going to try it. We'll have to ask Carlos how he gets on with the Agamatis, but I just think it doesn't work. Uh, a group of four of those guys, uh, slightly higher than two grav tanks for 16 strength, eight shots. Yeah. But you, you can't just take it as 16 strength, eight shots, right? It's, it's the quality of those shots really that matters and how good you can make them. So, you know, it's a lot of points for four models. Um, uh, but should try it. Let us know how it goes. Uh, okay, so that's my current list, my current normal list version 2B, um, which is the list I'm playing right now. Red, green, 09, welcome. And welcome, random scrub, too. Um, so, yeah, so that's my current list 2B, which I'll play next week against uh, the Knights and the Chaos list. Uh, Mr. Kavoshi, welcome. Just joined the session, so I don't know what you covered previously. What custodial units are traps? Stuff that looks good in paper and just underperforms in practice. Um, so I think, uh, Mr. Kavoshi, it is definitely worth, if you haven't, going back to watching the other Tacticas, because that's where we analyze all the units individually. This is kind of our list building um, uh, episode. But um, certainly the traps are Dreadnoughts. Um, the uh, Venatari. Those are the big, those are the like real traps of the of the book. Obviously, like I'm not going to say the Land Raider, but you know most people know that. <laughs> Shadizo, how's it going? Um, so that's the list right now. It's performing pretty well. I just really like the Blaze uh, because it gives a lot of flexibility actually uh, for 20 extra points, and that's what we got to work with. Uh, Telamon, yeah. So the Telamon, unfortunately. Uh, it just got it just got too bad, and the main problem with the Telamon really is is the is the range. Um, punchy Telamon's fine, um, but you got to get it there. So now you got to spend the CP to deep strike it. Then you got to homer that because if you have two hundred and eighty two points sitting there and fail a nine inch charge, you're gonna fucking cry. Um, so yeah, so it's all good with the punchy Telamon if you have the resources to 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 devote to getting it to do stuff um yeah so so fine um if the telemon could move and shoot without penalty i would probably take it with its shorter range because then i would put it at the front it's pretty hard to kill and it would basically be a soak and um probably shoot some stuff before it dies but with the half range and basically hitting on threes to get into range now i think it's just like uh yeah, it's just that. Uh, um, so the half fist, half gun, sure. Again, you're not going to use the fist most of the game or you're not going to use the gun most of the game. So it seems like a halfway compromise on being good at either of them. You're not good at either of them now. So um, red, green, sorry. Uh, this is not a kid-friendly show, but I try not to swear too much. Um so, uh, that's my list currently right now. So, if I was to change this list, let's see, like what's going to what's what's going to cause me to change this list? Well, if I don't like that Alaris captain, which, you know, haven't had enough playtime with it yet to really know if that's that's uh, but basically that's where I sacrifice the points to make way for the double blaze. I still think the triple blaze is um is really nice and uh, the triple Cladius, and i think it's really you know the backbone of the list and then the aqualon and the bike units just adding forward pressure and drop pressure um and it's really how you use it how you use the list is the most important thing it's all good to have a list but if you can't play it well you know this is a list where as i said everything does something has to do something every turn uh, no wasted points. Everything is, does something. Every wound hurts. Every model lost hurts. There's no wasted efficiency here. It is just uh, everything useful. Very toolboxy. Can do hordes. 
can do vehicles, uh, can kill tough units like Bulgren and uh, Centurions and stuff like that. There's three tanks that can do minus two to charge and screen. The bikes are good for screen. The bikes can stoop. Um, you can start the Terminators on the table as a bully unit inside a building. Um, it can take out flyers, those three tanks and the bike unit and the, uh, can take out uh, flyers, two to three flyers a turn. So th this is a lot of utility in facing a lot of different lists. Um, it can kill knights. Um, so, you know, it, it's just uh, a, a, an all around list for lots of things. Three Thunderfire Cannons probably ruins my day. You know, like, you know, there's, there's just so much Marine shit right now that just kicks butt. You have to play really smart and be a little bit lucky and you roll four ups. Um, and so, you know, it's it, it's what it is. You know, we're not the only people struggling to beat Marines. Um, so if you can, I'm not sure a better way to build against Marines with what we have. I don't think we really have um i don't think we really have a good way of beating marines right now we depend on playing good and hoping that the other player has just picked up marines because they think it's good and are not that good at playing marines because marines can be tricky to play so um, marines are just bordering on that elite arminess so i think if you can abuse a less experienced player you will win that game if there's good terrain you you might win that game if you play really smart but if you won't outshoot a marine list and um yeah, so it's just tough right now. We don't have, we're too expensive. And we don't have a lot of other tools. Without the Forge World, like we would totally be like screwed. Like, so without Forge World, what you're running is basically a battalion, a guard battalion, um, maybe consider a big unit of custodian guard, and then you're running Alaris and Wardens, basically. So, so that's your, and a unit of bikes. So that's kind of your non Forge World list. Here, let's do that. Okay, so because somebody uh, earlier, there's been a few people on the chat saying their local club or store doesn't allow Forge World, <laughs> which is stupid. But anyway, it is what it is. So let's make a list without Forge World. Okay, so we got Valoris. We've got Arvaxilla, who's running the Magnifica. Okay, we've got Shield Captain on bike. Boom. All right, now let's run a unit of Wardens. Okay. And the Wardens are going to be at least seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. And then we've got uh, a unit of Alaris Terminators. And they can be six Alaris. Then we've got a unit of Bikes. One, two, three, five Bikes. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, no, that's way too many Bikes. Don't need seven Bikes. One, two, three, four, five. Five bikes. Okay, so now we have three hammer units, Alaris, Wardens, and bikes. Three HQs, and we're, we still have 190 points. So we can throw in... Uh, mm, 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 mm. What would be fun? Maybe, you know, a, a shield unit at the back. So here are the options. You throw in a three-man guardian unit with all shields as your engineers backfield unit you could do that or you could throw in a um oh those dreadnoughts are forge world i forgot yeah i think that's the best thing you do with no forge world so you take these dudes and they're just running shields for staying power in your back in your backfield and for your engineer unit all right 1989. There you go. Add a few minutes of quarter. You're done. Yeah, the problem with the Thunderfire is if you run an MSU unit, like three Guardians, so that you don't get slowed, they will just die. <laughs> like a Thunderfire cannon will kill that unit. Uh, everything they shoot is on your invuln. Like, just kill that unit. Double shoot, just kill that unit. Three of them, just kill that unit. So... Um, yeah, so they can, if you have three hammer units, so like this, they can only slow one of them and also they can't slow the bike unit. So, you know, 
you just have, and that's spending their vital CP, which they're not spending on something else. So, you know, it does cost them three CP to double shoot and to slow something. So, you know, the, it, it, it's a cost for them. Um, but um, yeah, so I think this is a a decent non four drill custodies list right here. Uh, three really powerful units. Um, and so what you could do is start the wardens on the table as a bully unit and drop in the alaris and and move the bikes up or you could spend a cp and drop the wardens um, and then you have uh, your hqs you have your vexilla and you got a bike unit and then you got a little engineer unit at the back for backfield deep strike protection counter charge and also for engineer so there you go that's a decent uh non forgeral list that uh, you can take so as you can see the basic principle is trying to maximize useful units and not take chaff we don't have the luxury of chaff everything is too expensive to be chaff nothing can be chaff um so just trying to cover as many bases as you can uh, to try and do as much as you can with every unit that's basically the principle of custodies list building i believe okay there we go so i think we've come to the end of our list building session and i hope that people found that helpful especially if you're new to custodies and you're wondering um you know how can we build a list well there you go we just told you how okay so if people have questions on that please post and we will answer them shortly um Matt Lutz, welcome. Have you ever run large numbers of Alaris Terminators intending on breaking them up into a whole bunch of one models? No. No. Uh, never, ever, ever split your Alaris Terminators, uh, especially in ITC. Um, do not do that because literally you have just lost the game. You're now giving up kill, kill more. Um, and, and yeah, yeah, don't, don't do that. Never split your unit. <laughs> like, never, never split your unit. As I, as I said, you're, the whole point of the custodian army is to try and deny points, deny that kill. Um, and so you, you, you don't want to give away easy kills by now having little four-wound dudes walking around, which can be taken out easily by a unit of intercessors or thunderfires or eliminators or anything like that. So, no, 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 definitely don't do that. There's no good reason to split your guys. Like, never. You should just cross that stratagem off your codex. You never use it. Um, uh, have you ever run uh, Metlets? Mr. Kovoshi, is there a particular point level where custodies shine? Yeah, as many points as you can. Um, because um, we don't work well in low point. It's, it's a conundrum. Um, so if you play really low points, the only advantage you have is that you might have things that your opponent can't kill because they have limited points to run things to kill you. You become a little bit tougher in low point armies, but you can bring so little and do very little back in response. So I think Custodes is better at you know 2,000 points or more. Um, you know, going to 1,500 requires you to cut a lot of power from your list. Um, so it's not, not great. I, I never play less than 2,000 because I think it's it's a big sacrifice. Um, so good questions, guys. Uh, Dakarin, you split your squad once at the bottom of turn six on mission six map and ran into a dexter. Sure. And that might help you with Maelstrom missions. So there might be a couple opportunities where you shift. So we're talking about ITC, obviously, where you don't want to give up kill more. But if you're playing ETC and you need to split to cover a few objectives and where you're only six, maxing six on kill, kill points, then that might be a, a very nice thing to do. Um, so being a little bit facetious, we're talking ITC should never split in ITC. But for other formats, you may well split your Alaris. Uh, although, you know, you are still making them easier to kill. They're not characters or anything. Now, that would be cool if they split and became characters. That would be cool. I would pay 2 CP for that. Yes. That would be cool if they split and became characters. Yeah, that would be sweet. But um, unfortunately, they don't. They just split and become six times easier to kill. Um but yeah, um, and you'll probably find these days that causing your opponent to split fire is not really a big deal for them. <laughs> um, 
George, you split in okay for late game if they're still alive. Yep, that's right. You know, uh, we tend to be more alive than our opponents at the end of the game if you get to turn six, but it may not be worth splitting like two guys or three guys. Uh, random scrub. How would you run a battalion list not using min squads but like large groups? Okay, so um, so that is a thing that we could probably do better now, but still. Uh, so what I would do is run your run Sagittarium, either two kind of five man units and a min unit of guardians. So this is the other way of running the foot list. So you run a three man guardian unit with shields as your engineer backfield, etc. As we already said, and then run two larger, you know, four or five man Sagittarium units to slowly move up the field and sweep things away with their shooting. Um, and then that's your basic battalion that's running you like 700, 800 points. Um, and then you, you do the same as we said. So bike unit and a hammer, Aqualon or Alaris or whatever your units are. Um, and so you, you're, you're basically trying with, now that we can run Sagittarium as troops, you are making your previous guardian units a little bit more useful. So they, cause they can actually reach out at 36 inch range and take out little units. So that is a better way of running battalion because now you're not wasting three troop slots just to get CP, your troop slots are actually doing something. So that's what I would do is run kind of two Sagittarium units and then a, and then a base um, guardian unit as your engineer or whatever. A, a unit of three guardians with storm shields is really hard to shift uh, sitting on the backfield getting you engineers. Um, it's a lot of points, 156, you know, 160 points to get engineers, but you know that's what we have to do. Um, so that's something worth considering. Uh, George, playing against the brutality of Space Marine Flyer Spam and the Thunderfire Cannon, Centurions being twice as good for half the price, good terrain placement. Yeah, yeah. So you need, you need, you need, you need terrain. So you, sh if people watch my streams, you, sh you know, I, my, tr my tables are pretty heavy. Not because I'm trying to give myself an advantage. That's generally how heavy our tables are in in tournaments around here, because that because we we run those. Um, and but without that, like it would be even worse. Um, and terrain doesn't matter against thunderfire cannons, obviously. Um, you know everything in the in the freaking marine army is minus two, so you're really just like four upping it the whole game. <laughs> it's, it's 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 horrible. And yeah, like I'm not gonna lie, I'm not gonna say we are one of the powerhouse codexes right now. But against most armies other than Marines, we still do pretty good, um, especially if played well. And I think I've shown that in, in all the recent battle reports. So, you know, and, and everybody struggles against Marines right now. So, you know, we're no, we're no different from everybody else there. But I think against a lot of other lists, we can do well. So, so don't lose hope. <laughs> don't lose hope. Um, but yeah, so I think we've covered the main uh, list archetypes there and the main ways of building an effective list um and um yeah any more questions out there um so uh, i think there was a question i missed um how long um oh yeah mr kovoshi asked me uh, what questions do you try to answer when building your list? Okay, so I already went through this kind of. So how many points am I giving up? How many secondaries am I giving up? So I'm giving up four for gangbusters. I know that. But then I'm not giving up max anything else. I'm not giving up max headhunter. That's why I don't want to add an inquisitor to my list because now I give up four headhunter points. I'm not, and with the, all the freaking eliminators and snipers these days, you know, your characters w can die. So I'm not giving that up. I'm not giving away um, Mark for Death. Uh, well, I am, but they basically have to table me to get Mark for Death. So moot. Um, Big Game Hunter, now that I got rid of the palace tanks, I don't give up full Big Game Hunter. Never used to. Then Marines came along, and then I started giving up full Big Game Hunter by like turn 3-4. So that was no good. So I got rid of the palace tanks because I was giving away easy kills and Big Game Hunter. Um, and... Um, um, and yeah, so it's all about that kind of denial. Um, so that's what I'm thinking about. I'm thinking about how do I kill things at range? That's why I like the Caladius tanks. How do I kill things in combat? That's easy. And then I'm thinking about my local meta and general meta discussions. How do I kill knights? 
okay? Because in Ottawa, if you've ever been to an Ottawa tournament, there's a lot of knights. So if you can't kill three knights or survive that game against three knights, it's no good. So you need, that's why the Aquilon is so good. You need a way of killing knights. T8 in general, but knights specifically. Um, you need to be able to kill flyers. Five, six, seven flyers. So that's why the bike unit is still there. Caladius tanks are great at it. You know, uh, captain on bike. So you need to be able to kill flyers. Um, and then previously, you needed to be able to kill 60 plague bearers. Um, but now you don't need to do that so much. <laughs> and then locally, for us anyway, if you're going to try and win PNP, you have to be able to beat Chris and beat orcs and we don't orcs um the current iteration of orcs with all the smasher guns and the relic uh, sag and tank busters really hard for us actually um the previous iteration with just lots of boys and boys units is actually very easy for us because we can shoot them all off and uh, all their 30 attacks 40 attacks don't really do much to two up save so um so you have a chance against orcs if you play smart and you use terrain to not eat smash guns all the time and then you can shoot them off the table so i think my current list would do okay against orcs depending on terrain and mission but um yeah so so again it's uh, it's about your local so if you're playing in a meta where somebody is playing you know i don't know lots of something else then you know that's a question that you have to ask yourself how do i beat that um so those are the questions you ask yourself when you make any list not just uh custodies list uh somebody else asked me um how many times i play something before i change where is that Uh, where is it? It's somewhere up here. So somebody asked me, how many times do I play a list before I make changes? It depends. Um, so in the old days, I would change lists all the time, and I think that is a trap. Okay, so you have to, unless, you can't just base things on one game generally. Um, you, you need to give things a chance under different circumstances to do what it's supposed to do, especially if you didn't really face that situation. Now, if you put in, let's say you decide to put in a unit, uh, 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 you know, uh, th three blaze cannons, and then you face a, uh, a list with 10 rhinos and they don't kill anything. Well, why is that? It was a target priority. Was, did you leave your buff bubbles? Uh, or was it just bad rolling? Or are they truly not good at doing what you thought they were good at? So if the answer is the last one, then maybe you should reassess what you thought they were good at and are they actually good at it? Do some math, okay, against different targets. And if they're not, if you were wrong, then take it out, change your list. There's no point trying that against 50 different types of vehicles if it's always gonna be the same. Because most vehicles are like T7, three up save, you know, 10 to 14 wounds. Like they're pretty much similar in terms of like killiness, how to kill. So so by doing some math, you can sort of work that out before you even play the game. But if you get to the point where you play a game and it really underperformed because of what it is and what it was trying to do, not because of how you were trying to use it that was wrong or because of dice, never change the list just because your dice crapped out. That's going to happen to everybody. Um, then, you know, change your list. If, uh, if it was just a bad matchup or the deployment was bad, then, you know, you think about it, but you give it more iterations. So... I probably played um, like a good 10 games before I changed the version two. And it was the span of those games against almost all Marine opponents where I decided that I needed the blaze cannons. Um, initially I was running triple, uh, I was running two Caladius, normal Caladius and two palace tanks. And then it switched to, you know, needing a blaze and then one blaze and one Caladius. And then I was given up big game hunter. And so it just went through iterations of of not being a hit hard enough and giving up big game hunter and then so that led me to my current list so um so really it's just a case of play 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 and change when you need to change but don't just change on a whim 
um, if you think that you're onto something. If you really don't know and you're just trying a whole new brand new list, then you have to think about it a little bit critically. You have to. That's why I, I like the fact that it, my games are recorded and I can look back at them and I do go back and watch my games. Um, but if you have the opportunity, just record your game. Just use your phone, record some snippets here and there. You don't have to record the whole game um, and go back and watch. Like, how good was that? Did I just use it wrong or is it really not as good as I thought it was at doing something? Um, so that's definitely a tip. If you can record your games that can a help you learn from your mistakes, you can show people clips and they can tell you what they thought was, was done right or wrong, but also help you reassess things at the end of the day. Um, so that, that's my advice on how often you should change your list. Okay. So part eight, let's see what we're going to do for part eight. Where's my thing? Okay, so I got a... Uh, there were some things that people wanted me to cover on Tactica. If people have topics that they want me to cover in Tactica that I haven't covered already, please put it in the chat or message me or put it in the Custodies Discord um, and I will cover them in Tactica episodes because now we're starting to... Uh, we've gotten past like the basics, the unit reviews, list building. So now um, a, I've got a bunch of uh, games uh, that I've played that I'm going to go over and telestrate now. Um, games that I've won and games that I've lost. So we're going to start doing that in the Tactica again. We did that a couple times already. And then we have a, a few other topics that people wanted. So people wanted a Tactica episode on deployment and castling how to castle or not castle you know when to put your uh, aqualine space and when to to not um you know bully units when to break your castle if you have castled deployment how to deploy in various deployment types and against certain armies and we can do that with a tabletop view so um definitely we're going to cover that maybe next time or the time after we're going to talk about deployment because a lot of times your game is won or lost in the deployment unfortunately that's the way the game is right now if you deploy badly you get shot off the table turn one and you're screwed if you deploy well it gives you a chance similarly if your opponent deploys badly and you take advantage of it you can win easily so deployment is so important so we will be covering deployment mr kavoshi if the custodians get a new codex in eighth and sisters of science get included would you change your list probably not sisters of silence don't give me anything right now they give me units that are very easy to kill, uh, so giving up kill and kill more, and they don't really add any shooting because uh, it's literally just bolter chicks, T3 bolter chicks. Flamers are like useless, um, and their anti-psyker is not that useful right now because the psyker heavy stuff is really not that much in the meta right now, um, and you can easily play around them. Um, if you don't want to make them as easy to kill, then you got to run fucking like rhinos, so which are not great. So I don't think actually Sisters of Science gives us anything. Um, oh, so let's talk about this. So Inquisitors. So I think um, splashing an Inquisitor may be nice um, in a like a foot list. Um, if you can find whatever the cheapest Inquisitor is, but... I, I personally am partial to Hector Rex, but he's 100 points. But if you can find space to splash an Inquisitor in without having to drop something important like a bike or an Aqualon, then go for it. I think it adds some psychic support. It adds smites. It adds anti-overwatch spell. It adds denies. And um, it's kind of nice. Um, so, so that can be useful. Hector Rex I like because he's two up, three up. Uh, and uh, he can actually do some stuff in combat, and he has native deep strike, which is the most important thing. Sure, he casts three and denies four, but, you know, whatever. Um, so so definitely Inquisitor is something to consider, especially if you're already souping. Um, what you have to watch out for, though, is these things are T3 squishy humans. Other than Rex, don't really have good inbound saves. They don't really kill a lot of stuff natively, so you're really just bringing them for psychic. One or two spells. Kind of, that's it. Um, oh, and Leadership 9. Yeah. Um, so, um, and in exchange, you have to spend some points. 
if you, if you have to drop an Aqualon or a bike or something like that to get it in, that's a steep price to pay. Um, you are giving up an easy character kill. So headhunter or kill or kill more. Uh, at least one time in the game. Because eliminators, like a unit of eliminators takes out an inquisitor. No problem. Um, so, you know, you have to balance that in. In my normal list... It's too finely tuned. I have no space for an Inquisitor. And I don't want to give up four Headhunters now. And, a, and an easy kill or a kill more. So, um, you know, if you if you don't get kill and kill more, if you don't get a kill more, that's like a two-point swing. So, um, so it's definitely not going in my normal list. But I might swing it into my um, foot list just to try that out. Hector Rex is on my table right now, ready to be painted. So I had that model for like a year. <laughs> So yeah, so that's uh, Inquisitors. Sorry, I forgot to talk about Inquisitors. I wanted to talk about that tonight too. Okay, the other topic people asked about is secondaries, picking secondaries. So I think there's a lot of general principles to talk about in terms of picking secondaries, but we can definitely talk about that and what secondaries uh, custodies generally find easier and harder to achieve. Uh, so we can definitely do a Tactica episode on ITC secondaries. Um and uh, not only uh, picking and achieving your own secondaries, but maybe denying other secondaries. So for sure, we'd talk about that. And then one thing somebody wanted me to talk about was using the Vexilla and the Homer stratagem, uh, which I think is a great topic. And we might throw in heroic intervention and the champion of Imperium warlord trait into that episode. Spend a little topic uh, episode on the tabletop where we can show you how to move the Vexilla up show you really how far the Vexilla can get in a game and how to effectively use the Homer. Because that is, after all, one of the few stratagems we try and always use every game. And it's such a game breaker, a backbreaking stratagem. So um, we will definitely use that. Maybe we'll do a general episode on stratagems and we can talk about Tanglefoot um, and uh, Avenge the Fallen, like the useful stratagems that we use all the time. Actually, that's a great idea. Let me write that down. Oh, General use of stratagems. Okay. So if people have other topics they want me to cover, uh, let me know. We can do tactical episodes on all of them. Um, and uh, we'll just uh, carry on as we go. Um, so that's it. Um, any other questions, guys, before we finish? So next week on the docket will be... Um, a, uh, I probably don't have an evening to do a Tactica episode next week, but I'm trying to get uh, Ian to come over and bring his Imperial Knights as requested by the Custodes group uh, against Triple Knights. And then on Thursday, it is confirmed Thursday, Day Hammer it needs to be 11 a.m. I'm going to be playing against Nick and his Chaos list, which I think currently has a bunch of Psychers, Demon Princes, um, Plague Burst Crawlers, that sort of stuff. That sort of stuff. So, um, so that should be a fun game. It's always fun playing Nick. And uh, that's what people requested. So we'll try and get two games on next week. And uh, probably continue with Tactica the week after that. So in the meantime, if you have top topics you want me to cover, please let me know. Um, please join the Custodes Discord chat. Uh, I'll put the uh, link up here. Let me see. Invite. So I'll just type it in here because it's on my phone here. Discord.gg slash h4 v j n e p all right that is a non-expiring link to our discord channel right now please join come join the conversation it's very active and lively we talk about all things custodies and soup and everything and uh you'll probably enjoy it do check out the other uh tactical videos leading up to this one this is part seven there's been six including a, a extra episode which is a interview with carlos kaiser do check out all the battle reports you can watch long versions uh or short versions up to you Mr. Kavoshi, is there a particular type of unit or HQ you would like to see the Custodes have in the future? Yes. Vexilla on bike. Although, if 
Ev- if the it is the destiny in Warhammer for everybody to get full rerolls, then the minus one to hit really becomes moot. But we would still need the Vexilla for Homer, and then maybe we can find points for the plus one attack banner. So I still think the Vexilla on bike would be sick. We we'll love a Vexilla on bike. A would make it much harder to kill faster. You could get it anywhere. Oh yeah, it'd be nice. Vexilla on bike would be super nice. Um, yeah, I would like for Valoris to get a little bit buffed for 185 points. Thank you. I look at Ferios and I just cry. Um, I would like v- uh, Valoris to give full rerolls, not just reroll once to hit. Reroll once to wound is fine because even G-Man got nerfed on that. But full rerolls to hit. I don't know why we don't have that. And everybody else is getting it, we should get that. And his big strength 10 Axe of Legend should be straight 3 damage. Straight 2 at least. Not D3, straight two or three damage. Thank you very much. And I would be happy with Valoris um, at 185 points. Or bring him down 40 points. And then I'll be also happy with him. So at the moment, like he shouldn't be that much more than a Smash Captain, to be perfectly honest. Uh, or give him fly in a jump pack. I don't know. Like, there's too many things that are like, you know, better for much less points these days. Um, so there we go. Um so yeah, so that's definitely uh, unit HQs that I'd like custodies to have in the future. Um, other units, uh, I mean, it's uh, you're just wish listing now. I mean, you know, totally wish listing. I'd like to have our Telemon back. Thank you. <laughs> uh, in the chat the other day, I posted a list of conditions. Uh, if uh, any of them were achieved, I would play the Telemon again. Number one, uh, add back like 12 inches to their range on both guns. I think I would play it again. Number two, bring it down like 60 points. I might consider playing it again. Number three, give it Machine Spirit so it can move without suffering penalty for moving. I would probably play it again and play it aggressively up at the front. Um, And um, number four, you know, put it back to strength nine. I think that in itself wouldn't make it that much better because it's still half range, but it would make it slightly more tolerable. Or keep it everything like it is, but double the number of shots. And then you just have to play it up close. So there you go. Those are my conditions upon which I would play the Telemon again. Um, otherwise, like what other units? I don't think we're going to see any more units, guys. We already had a whole new supplement, although it's Forge World. Um, so I doubt that we're going to see any new units. Um, in terms of the other wish listing, I mean, we've talked about this a little bit in the past. It's just wish listing, but it'd be nice if we were a little bit tougher these days. Four up invul just doesn't cut it. Uh, three up invul army wide would be nice, but I know that we're not going to get that. Maybe a better feel no pain than six up. Um, you know, uh, th- th- there could be a bunch of things that you you could argue for, but you know, no point wish listing at this point. We'll just see what happens. Um, okay, so that is it, guys. Join the channel. Thank you for watching, subscribing, uh, supporting, and uh, we're going to catch everybody next time. Thank you very much for watching.